In this demonstration, we're going to look at installing the vSphere 6.5 vCenter virtual appliance. What I've done is I've downloaded all the files that I require from VMware, came down as an ISO file. What I've then done is I've mounted the ISO file, I've come into the vcsa UI installer folder. Within here, we've got three different folders depending on the operating system I'm installing this appliance from. So we've got Linux, Mac and Windows. I'll go with Windows and I'll go for my installer.exe. Within here, what we've got is we've got four options. So we can install a new vCenter server appliance or platform service control appliance. We can upgrade from a previous version. We can migrate from a Windows Virtual Center server to the Linux appliance, or we can restore from a previously created backup. So what we'll do is we'll go with install. Now at this point on the introduction page, we're doing stage one. So we'll select next. We'll accept the license agreement. Ideally, we would have read it and select next. Then what we'll do is on the deployment type, we can either go for embedded or we can go for distributed or external platform service controller. So this point here, the virtual machine will run both of the services, platform service control and vCenter, or we can split them across multiple VMs. We're just going to go with embedded and select next. We need to fill out the information relating to the ASXi host that will host the virtual machine and specify the username and password. So I've specified sa-asxi-01.vclass.local, specified the port for HTTPS, root will be the username, and we've also specified as well the password. At this point here, we'll select Next. Then gives a certificate warning, so we'll just say yes to this. We are using a self-signed certificate. Next thing it'll do at this point here is we need to fill out the information relating to deploying the vCenter server. So we need to set up the appliance VM. Now, ideally, we'd be using a valid host name. I don't have a DNS server in this lab environment. So what I'm going to do is for the VM name, I'm just going to specify its IP address. Also as well, the root password and confirm the root password. So specify the IP address, specify the root password and confirmed it. So this will actually be the VM name. So we'll just select next. Then what we've got is we need to select our deployment size. So these are the deployment sizes we have. This shows how many virtual CPUs we'll get associated with the appliance, the memory, storage, how many hosts we can manage and how many VMs. I'm happy with tiny, so we'll select next. We then need to select our data store. So one of the nice things we have here is we have the ability to enable thin disk mode. So I'm going to go for my local 01-2 data store. Now notice when I select next, it says I've got insufficient disk space for thick provisioning. So we'll just go for enable thin disk mode and select next. We then just need to fill out the network settings. And what we've done here is the system name will be the IP address. I'm not using a fully qualified domain name, specifying the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway and the DNS server for when I do eventually set up records and select next. Then what we'll do is we'll quickly read through. We're happy with all of the settings. So at this point here, we select finish. As we can see, it's now initializing the deployment. Now this is going to take anywhere from 20 minutes up to half an hour to deploy. So at this point, all we'll do is we'll pause the presentation and return back once the deployment is complete. Stage one is now complete. So what we'll do at this point here is we'll click continue. Then what it does is it takes us into stage two of the installation. So what we've got is we'll select our next button. Brings us into our appliance configuration. So what we're going to do at this point here is we're going to set up our time synchronization. So what we're going to do at this point here is we'll stick with the synchronized time with NTP servers. And then all we need to do is enter the IP address of the NTP server. This point here, we're going to leave SSH access disabled, so we'll select next. Then brings us into a single sign on configuration. So we just need to fill out the domain also as well, fill out the password, confirm the password and specify our site name. And we've specified our SSO domain as vSphere.local. Username will be administrator. The password will be whatever the password is. And in the case of the site name, we specify this is site hyphen A. So this point here, we'll select next. We won't bother joining the VMware Customer Experience Program and select Next. Then we'll have a read through. Make sure we're happy with everything. And then at this point, we'll select Finish. As it says here, you will not be able to pause or stop the install for completing once it's started. So click OK to continue or cancel to stop. Well, I'm happy that I am going to install it. So at this point here, we'll select OK. 
Again, this will take a little while just for this to actually install. So at this point, we'll pause the presentation again and return back once the installation is complete. So as we can see, we've successfully set up this appliance. So we'll select close at this point here. Continue this website, not recommended. And as we can see at this point here, now brings us into a getting started screen. So what we want to do at this point here is we want to access our virtual center appliance and then start adding our ASXi hosts. And by adding the ASXi host, we're also as well potentially accessing or adding our virtual machines. So all we'll do at this point here is we'll just go for the VMware web client. That then brings us into the login screen. So all we'll do is put in the username and password. And we'll log in with administrator at vSphere.local, specify the password, and then select login. So as we can see, we've got our virtual center server. Next thing we need to do at this point here is we just need to create a data center because we can't add a host without a data center. So what I'll do at this point here is I'll just call this one training. And we'll select OK. Then what we would do is we'd right click, come to add host, and then what we would do is fill out the information relating to our host. But this is the end of the demonstration of installing the vSphere version 6.5 vCenter virtual appliance. Thank you.